listen to the adventure on Pumlet on W4CY Radio. Wake up, America! It's time for the adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Pipe Man. is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures of Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm excited about our next guest, who is like an incredible musician, but they also have some killer new music, so let's welcome to the show Julian from Polarity. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, brother. How are you? Oh, uh, doing amazing. You know, we got live music back, and I just got off the road from doing like festival radio coverage since may and it's been a beautiful thing not being locked down <laughs> it has been awesome man playing live shows has been a fantastic time again <laughs> we didn't realize how much like everybody didn't realize how much they missed it i guess i think that's the positive of the whole lockdown is i think people have a whole new appreciation both musicians and the attendees for live music because you know i think people were getting a little i don't know bitchy there right before the pandemic you know (laughs) a a bunch of karens going to concerts (laughs) honestly the 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 turnouts and everything for like smaller shows have been better because like as you said like everyone's been locked down everyone's been like cooped up so you know i think just people wanted to get out and it's kind of been a little bit of a resurgence in this in the smaller music scene to the mid-sized music scene it's kind of nice to see small shows get busy again I love that, too, because to, to me, a, a club show is my favorite show, 100%. Oh, 100%, brother. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Like, there's just something about it. You know, it doesn't matter if there's, if there's a full house, half house, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's just, it, and the way we look at it is, you know, we go out there and we play it like it's the last show ever. Yeah. And, and it's so much more intimate. And I, I can tell you, you and I probably wouldn't be talking today if it weren't for club shows. Because I remember the first club show I ever went to, 1981, Motley Crue at the Roxy on the Sunset Strip. And uh, Oh, that probably was amazing times. <laughs> oh, I mean, it was before they even had their album out. You know, it was like, wow, I went to say, I'm like, I'm never going to a real concert ever again. <laughs> 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 it's just something different about i find you know between like a big festival where you know your favorite bands are cut like strapped for time you know what i mean yeah they cram in like you know 60 bands and everybody's playing 25 minutes and it's like oh i wish i got to see you know more than four or five songs from some of the like you know side stage bands sometimes you know i'm glad you brought that up because one of the things that always annoyed me is people that when like one band gets canceled from a festival for whatever the reason is, or like, oh man, that's the only reason I was going to a festival. First of all, the reason to go to a festival is to have a blast and discover new music. If you're going for one mm-hmm. band, just go to their concert because their concert show is their real show. There's a difference between the festival show and their concert show. So I don't understand people that are like, oh, I'm only going to see one band. Yeah. It's, go go watch the headliner at like 10 o'clock at night after there's been, you know, 25 other bands. I know, right? And, and it's not even their real show, you know? It's just their festival no. show. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, like you see a band, I'm trying to think of, like, okay, for example, if you were to see a band that, like, I've seen a couple times now, a band called Hacken. If you were to go see Hacken in a, in a small club or on a festival, I'd much wa- rather watch Hacken in, like, a 2000 person venue or less because yeah. they're going to be, it's more engaging. It, it's, it's their actual show. Like you said. Yeah, totally. hundred percent. 
So let's tell the listeners a little bit about Polarity, because you guys got some kick-ass music. You got a new single, Destruction of Memory, and a lot of good stuff coming out. So let's uh, give them a little intel on you guys. <clears throat> well, basically, Polarity's been around for, I think, about 13 years. I, I knew them just in the scene from other playing in other bands and being a session musician. Been, like, cutting my teeth, been playing the drums for since I was about 11 or 12 years old. And basically, I got to befriend them over time. We all got like buddies, and I was like not really super busy because it was during COVID times. And the, their drummer decided that he, and Eric, he's a good friend of mine. We still talk to this day. We're all buddies. He decided to move like you know an hour and a half, two hours away to where his cottage was and start his own business. So he's been really successful at that. And they hit me up, and yeah, I've been in the band for almost two years now. Nice. And the new the new single is Destruction of Memory. You're right. It's it's funny because it's a seven and a half minute song. It's getting played on the radio. <laughs> wow, that's like the good old yeah. days. <laughs> that's what I I am astonished. I I kid you not. I'm just like <laughs> I can't believe it. But I'm just like okay. I'm fine with that because you know what? I think a lot of things that happen, and I've been guilty of this before too is like bands try to micromanage their sound too much and they get away from what they're trying to create polarity is all about giving positive vibes and connecting with people that's what we want exactly and musicianship yeah and you can't really display musicianship in a two-minute song no i mean and and i mean some of our songs are shorter and they're a little more straight to the point but i mean some of them are a lot more proggy too, right? Where yeah. they, you know, seven and a half minutes, it's a long song. There's lots of different parts and moving pieces, right? Yeah. Could you imagine if, like, you took like Temple of Searing and made it a two-minute song? <laughs> it wouldn't make sense. No, exactly. Right? Uh, it's just not enough time. <laughs> exactly, and. I think that's what, like, a lot of kids nowadays are missing with this whole track, track, track mentality because some of my favorite songs, if I only listened to the first 10 seconds of the song, I probably would have switched tracks to. Well, I mean, here's a good example for you. <laughs> just just listen to House of the Holy and at the, what's the last song? No Quarter. Yeah. That's one of the better songs on the record. It's, it's one of my favorite songs on the record. I love the whole record. That's... Uh, that's hands down my favorite Zeppelin record. But No Quarter is a is a prime example. Or if you want to look at Tool, Tool's got a song on Enema called Push It. And it's one of the later songs on the album. And it's one of the best songs. On the, I think it's their best song. <laughs> well, and I'm seeing it happen right now, actually, because Slipknot released their new album. And I'm seeing a bunch of idiots out there complaining about the album because they only listened to the the beginning of the first song of the album, which is like... <laughs> So typical, not Slipknot. And then, you know, if you miss the rest of the album, you miss the brutality that you were looking for. Oh, I agree. When I heard that first song, I was like, this is a totally a shot at Roadrunner because they're trying to get off their label is my understanding. I mean, I, I don't want to say things I shouldn't, but at the same time, my understanding is they're, this is their last record on their deal and that they were kind of like, we're done with this. We want to just go do our own thing. As most p- artists would want to do nowadays, like because I don't know, I come from the days when the record labels told the metal bands what to do, and yep. uh, I was there when it happened, and it just ruined a lot of bands that were actually good bands, and it actually ruined metal. I think that's what paved the way for grunge to destroy metal for that period of time. You think so? Yeah, because you got, what happened is they took all these, like, really, like, even Motley Crue was not hair glam in the beginning. They were more like horror punk. Mm -hmm. And so you take all these bands and turn them into hair metal, and then all the metal heads are like, screw this crap. And then it just, I think it Mm -hmm. just paved the way to be able to have, like, you know, grunge came along and went back to, I don't know, normal is the best way I could put it. Like, not that not that the music itself was normal, but it's just like not making everything what it's not. Like, hair metal is not metal, in my opinion. Just saying. I would 150 million percent agree with you. Right? <laughs> yeah, so there you go. I'm on that same page. 
And so that's why I think that happened. And then you had like, then you had bands re come out like Pantera that brought things back. But even Pantera was hair metal oh, yeah. in the beginning, you know. So yeah, they were. <laughs> thankfully, they went a mm-hmm. different direction. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I, Pantera is also one of the polarity favorites as well, right? That's where a lot of like the groove side comes in the thing. Like, I mean, hey, Eric's a great drummer, and I love him. He's a great, great band member. But but we definitely have like slightly different styles in a way too, right? So, like, there's no disrespect there or bad blood. I love that guy. Him and I get along great. But Pantera is definitely, I would say, one thing him and I would totally 100% agree on. <laughs> there you go. I love it. And I love you guys, great. and I love your music. Everybody needs to definitely check out the new music and check out the song Destruction of Memory and everything else. So tell everybody how they connect to you guys on socials, on the web, and most importantly, buy your merch, because that's the only way artists survive today. Yeah, basically, polaritymusic.com is the website. And then everything's just, you know, Instagram.com slash polaritymusic, Facebook.com slash polaritymusic. We don't use Twitter. This is not really our thing. And then we're also playing November 5th in London, Ontario. Nice. Uh, at the Richmond House. Nice, love it. So we'll be there, and new merch will be coming, too. We're, we're in the process of designing a whole bunch of new stuff, but we still have some stuff in stock. Great. Any final words you want to get, leave our listeners with that we haven't covered already? Uh, yeah, just everybody check out the Jukasa Live Off the Floor EP. It's got Destruction of a Memory Circle, Terra Firma. There are three great songs. Well, we feel they're great songs. And Darren and Jill were great engineers to work with at Jukasa, world-class Juno winners. They're the best. We love them. But yeah, we just love everybody, and we just want to bring positivity to everyone. That's that's the main goal about polarity: is just enjoy life and enjoy music. My two favorite things, because I'm also a motivational speaker, so positivity and great music are the best things. That's it, man. Love it, and everybody, make sure to check polarity out. You will love them too. Thanks a lot for being on the Adventures of Pipe Man. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the Adventures of Pipe Man on W4CY Radio.